as I continue to search for competitive tech types, I read the Modern Gate Prime Primer article on Steam Hack, and well, it would be really interesting if I went back to Gate, an ID that I've dismissed since Honor and Profit as being uh, no longer viable due to a lot of reasons. But you can't go wrong with economy, and Gate provides just that. So I might give it a shot, and who knows, I might actually bring it to store championships. So um, I don't need to explain the deck too much if you want to know more. Uh, don't ask me. Go look for the article yourself on Steam Hack. I can assure you uh, the author did, did a very good job of explaining the card choices and how it should be played. Unfortunately for this match, I don't get a standard matchup. Instead, I get Jinteki PE, which uh, I'm forced to play a very different uh, style for. And of course, I didn't pack feedback filter. So yeah, um, I'm in a little hole here. So my opening hand has to be very good to compensate for that fact. And my, my, it didn't. It wasn't very good, so I had to mulligan for this. This hand is okay. The best part of this hand is that it contains KD Jones. KD Jones means that I can actually afford to not play the Compromise Employees and Show Gambles in my deck. Now, you notice that Compromise Employee is something very different from what uh, you see in the Steam Hack, Steam Hack article. You don't see any Compromise Employees, but I figured that if you're going to run three emergency shutdowns, and you're going to parasite the enemy's eyes, you might as well use this wonderful resource that's in the faction. Here I attempt a blunt, uh, blind siphon, forcing him to res the katana, and I figured that it was a porous ice, and I could shake the tags, which was the case. Um, this is mostly to test the waters and force him to res ice. Uh, I could do a normal run, but if I did a normal run and it turns out it was a katana, I would I could have lost my account siphon and I wouldn't have gotten much out of it other than two credits and an excess. So hence the blind siphon, which worked out in my favor. Even though I lost three cards, now I actually have a good credit lead. Um, any programs that I draw can be immediately installed without worrying about my credit pool, which is great. Now here he does something really weird. He plays Celebrity Gift. Hmm. Jinteki P playing Celebrity Gift. That's a very different kind of Jinteki. And he shows, among other things, the subliminal messaging and a Caprice Nisei, which is on his HQ right now. So yes, very, very different. It's not the Cambridge Jinteki style. It's something completely different. Or rather, it seems like it's made to grind me out with lots of net damage. So that is something I am not a fan of. Obviously, because I'm playing criminal without feedback filter. We'll see what I can do about this. Alright, so I suspect that he's trying to sneak out an agenda. I run it, turns out it's a Jackson Howard. So the corp sacks it and the game goes on. Now obviously here I'm drawing very, very heavily. There is one thing I'm searching for, it's none other than that Mimic. With Mimic I'll be able to break Neuro Katana with Impunity, along with all the other nasty Jinteki Ice, Surugi and Komaino come to mind. That definitely want to avoid that fate. Yes, this is why Gabe is so is not that good nowadays. In the past, I would just simply run over RD and HQ, taking the net damage to the face because um, it didn't matter back then. But now, it's very dangerous to do so, especially because I only have one Corona in my deck. The other barrier breaker is a breach, and I could easily get locked out if I'm not careful with it. I draw into my passport, and it gets installed. And finally, I play a bank job with my last click. Um, this is because I do not want to overdraw with my last click. The la the worst thing you can do against Jinteki PE is to overdraw, discard down, and then find that you have no more cards left to take net damage. Alright, so, so it shows me more of his agenda suite. Vito AIs and Future Perfects. Not something I want to mess around with. Okay, over to me. I draw a Parasite. Now, Parasite is usually good in the Jinteki PE matchup. Unfortunately, I need to rest his eyes first, which means I need to find the Mimic. I cannot take the Komaino to the face at this point. Um, I mean, I could, but I really do not want to. That is my biggest fear. And that probably is a mistake. Because it is quite clear that he's not running that kind of Jinteki. Well, it could. He could easily be running Komainos, don't get me wrong. But, um, yeah, I should attempt to at least force him to rest ice so that I can actually play my Parasites. That is something I haven't really considered. Or at least force him to rest his eyes so that I know what kind of breakers I need. Anyway, I draw into even more breakers. Still haven't found any of my two special orders or my mimic, which is getting to be a huge problem because without 
the mimic I can't safely run. So I can only build my servers up, I mean build my rig up. And this allows him to gain massive amounts of credits. With all his celebrity gifts and restructures, he's up to 26, now 27 credits. Subliminal is powering him up. Thankfully, he's not playing the shell game or the remote server game. Okay, I take that back. He's making a remote server now. I need to contest it. And what better way to do it than with inside job? Of course, he should know that I'm running inside job. So we'll see a Caprice Nisei. Well, I guess that's to be expected. So he's basically running a deck that protects its agendas using Caprice Nisei, which is reasonable, I suppose. But this should tip me off that his eyes are all taxing. And yeah, I need to be wary of that. Be wary of that, rather. So, um, I do trash the Caprice Nisei. Thankfully, I won the side game. And I pass the turn over with two same old things out. Uh, Unfortunately, I cannot say more thing a special order. That would have really helped. Okay, now he tries to score an agenda behind his servers. Um, or it could be a trap. Either way, I'm not going to find out. Um, there's no point. If he does this, if it is an agenda, he will know for sure that I cannot get through his server. So there's no point in attempting to contest it. If he knows that I can get through, he would put a trap in there instead to catch me off guard. So. I'm not going to contest the server, I'm just going to find my Mimic, which I des so desperately need at this point. Unfortunately, I haven't found it, and I'm forced to discard down lots of cards, which is a huge problem against Jintaki PE, you should never do this. But I do find my Sneak Door better, and that could be my solution, my uh, back door out. Um, yeah, my back door, my sneaky back door out. So he discards my data sucker and scores a Nisei. Very interesting agenda choice. Well, it's a very powerful agenda, so I guess it should be expected. But still, that poses quite a few problems for me. Alright, so I do sneak door, and it turns out it's just a Himitsu Baku protecting archives. So I'm going to be able to easily get three runs on HQ. And the first run nets me a future perfect. Once again, I guess the side game correctly. So that was a very huge help for me. And I decided that that was enough. He may have, he did have a fetal AI in hand. I saw that already, but I was not in a position to contest the fetal AI. I needed three cards in hand for that. I only had two, so I had to draw up and hit KT. Now he plays a power shutdown. This tells me a lot about his deck, but when I was playing it, I was too muddle headed to realize he is playing a rig destruction deck. Remember. In a few videos, I mentioned about how Jinteki is perfectly placed to play the game where your programs are never safe in your hand or on your table because uh, with net damage and program trashing, your programs are always vulnerable. That is the kind of Jinteki he's playing and I should have realized that. So what do you expect from this kind of Jinteki? Notice that he scored clone retirement, so this lends itself to the fact that he's playing not just Power Shutdown, but also Grim, because that is the most likely place you want to use Clone Retirement on, to remove the Grim's bad publicity. Worse, Clone Retirement also enables Archer. Now you know what kind of deck he's building. That's a very powerful deck, especially against criminals like me. So, yeah, I need to be prepared for that. Unfortunately, I wasn't thinking about that at all, and as you are about to see, I'm going to make a very costly mistake. In the meantime, he just plays a couple of cards and I still sub HQ. Very interesting. Alright, over to me. Now I do a sneak down on archives to check his eyes and he raises the archer. Yep, this was the turning point. Huge mistake, especially since I had the fairy in hand. Uh, I should have figured that he would be running archer in his deck even though I didn't see it. It is very easy to figure out when you know that they're running clone retirement and power shutdown. It, I mean, it's just basic deduction. So that basically killed my game. The Mimic was so essential to me uh, having a shot at this game. Breaking Neuro Katana is so important and not having access to that uh, is a huge problem. So I more or less can concede at this point, but since I have three agenda points, I might as well play on, right? And I have two same old things which can become inside jobs in a pinch. We'll see if that uh, comes into play. Now, over time you notice that I've installed my compromised employees. I didn't mean to do that. 
um, that was not part of my plans, but it, uh, that was the way uh, things worked out in the end because I found myself flooded with cards in my hand and I didn't want to discard them, so I might as well make the fullest use of them. So I just played the compromise employees since they were the best thing to play. Now I make a run on R&D with a fairy in case he raises a Kumaino against me. So this could arguably be a mistake. As you see here, he raises a Grim again, an ice I should expect. And it is at this point that I wish that I didn't play the fairy. The fairy could have been in my hand. I could have been using that to break something more important. So he shows me the second ice, which is a pup. I can pay through that. Third piece of ice is a pup. Ooh, RD is free for the picking. Now you notice I installed RD interface. I had to think about that for quite a while. Um, RD interface is not very good against Jitaki PE, but now that I know that know his rough deck composition, I can be fairly uh, I can feel fairly safe about uh, running with RD interface because I can deduce that he has no snares in his deck. Remember that deck space is uh, constrained, so if he has to pack so many deck slots for Neuro Katanas, Grims, Archers, Power Shutdowns, and Shocks, he won't have enough deck space for snares. So, yeah, the chance of me hitting two snares in a row, or with Vito Ice, is pretty low. And I see the Philotic Entanglement in his hand. That is very juicy, but unfortunately, I have no way to get it. I could inside drop his hand, not very worth it at this point, however. Now, as you notice, RD is completely porous, I just need to pay 3 credits. Minus 2, since I played a Parasite on the pub. And then I run. Big mistake. I should have ran first click, and then Parasited the Yagura. I knew that he had a Yagura in hand, because he showed that to me with Celebrity Gift. I knew it was a Yagura, hence it was safe to run, without a, a Sentry Breaker. Big mistake, and yeah. Parasiting the Yagura would have been the right choice. But the good news is, because I play R&D interface instead of the Maker's Eye, I'm able to ex still access his R&D and score a Nisei. Uh, I was debating between R&D interface and Maker's Eye, and I decided that uh, for two influence, I can only include one copy of them. I decided that if it was one copy, R&D interface would be better, and this game proves that, uh, proves that just that. Because RD interface is essential against anyone who runs daily business show, and I cannot afford to trash it. And it's especially essential against Nerf Hub, who can draw through RD lock. So you want the RD interface. I cannot afford to include two, but if I had to include one, it would be the interface over the maker's eye. Now, um, I still have to be uh, keep in mind that he does have a Nisei token available. So this makes, means that I'm less inclined to go all in on his remote server, which means that I cannot just sit back, find my last few breakers, and then contest his remote server when the time has come. Uh, Nis Caprice Nisei with Nisei Mark 2 is a bit uh, too much for me to handle, too many side games. So um, right now I'm just going to run R&D every turn, uh, ho hopefully have his R&D in a secure lock, and then try to fish out his last agenda. Uh, all I need is one more agenda at this point to win the game. Uh, he will be able to fire Yagura off, but I'll always get to see the second card, which could be the winning agenda. I'm willing to take the net damage every time I run through Yagura, because I still have 15 cards left in my hand and deck. Combine 15 cards to find one agenda should be pretty reasonable. Um, the only issue right now is that uh, I need to be careful with my breakers. So far, I think I only have 2... Two fairies left, if I'm not wrong. One in my hand and one in my deck. Uh, I believe so. And the only remaining breakers in my deck are one copy of Passport and one copy of Breach. So there is no reason to contest the remote server at all. Yep, I only have used one fairy. So I have two more fairies, one Breach, one Passport. The, the uh, Passport is especially important at this point because I just saw the Lotus Field on R&D. So I know that he just plays a Lotus Field uh, on top of R&D to defend it. I run it to co double confirm my suspicions and turns out I was right. So I'm looking for my Lotus Field right now. I mean, sorry, not Lotus Field, my Passport right now. With Passport and Grim, I'll be able to, I mean, with Passport and Fairy, 
I'll be able to get through his R&D one time. With two fairies, I can get through his R&D twice, which should be enough to secure the game. That's four excesses. Um, minus two, if you consider the Nisei Mark II token. So that is exactly what I'm waiting for. And of course, you might be thinking, why am I not installing my fairies? Pretty simple. Uh, he has power shutdown. Unfortunately, as I said, with this archetype, your programs are neither safe in your hand nor on your rig. So he scores a clone retirement, and as a result, I lose one of my fairies. So now I'm down to one fairy. Things are, if you don't mind the pun, looking grim for me. But all right. So he plays the subliminal messaging and uh, makes a new remote, and tries to score an agenda in the fortified remote. I know I can't really contest the fortified remote. If he dares to do that, it means that he knows that his remote is secure. So Instead, what I'm going to do is to account siphon him. This should force his hand. Uh, Gabe's bag of, trick, bag of tricks means that I can try to be crafty and from this perhaps ex extract information on what kind of ice or yeah, what kind of ice he's running on his remote, give, judging by his willingness to rest ice. So he raises a Nero Katana that costs me one fairy and because I have three cards in hand, I can sack the, my other three cards left in my hand for the siphon, but before that, he stops my run. So here, on my second click, I draw up, obviously, and then at this point, I realize I could attempt to steal the Philotic. Um, yeah, I should have attempted to steal the Philotic at this point. Instead, I made the safe play, and I draw up to three cards, knowing that the Philotic Entanglement will not kill me. But, unfortunately, I was cursing on the chat because my second card, that I, the first card I drew was the Passport. And yeah, that's not a good thing because I needed that Passport to get through R&D. It was my one chance and it's gone. So in retrospect, what I should have done was to inside job the remote with him on 7 credits left. I should be able to do so successfully. Rather than losing all my losing my breakers, I know that when the moment I drew the passport from my deck, I knew that I was going to lose it either through the philotic or through scoring the philotic, stealing the philotic myself. So I should have just went all out for the philotic, knowing that it would win me the game if he wasn't able to rest the ice on the remote. I didn't do that, and that was very costly for me. So at this point, my only hope right now is. I'm basically grasp, grasping on strings at this point. Um, I spent my first two clicks drawing, and because inside job takes two clicks to play from same old thing, I had to spend my last two clicks inside jobbing, which means that I'm now down to one card because of Yagura. If I hit a fetal AI, I will still lose the game. You might be wondering why do I not um, draw up to four cards before running. Uh, the rationale is pretty simple. Um, if I do draw to 4 cards, I am almost certain he will ice up R&D the next turn. And once he does that, uh, my hopes of winning are more or less dashed. So I draw my last 2 cards, and I play with my last guess of breath, I play the same old thing. On R&D, losing 1 card to Yagura. My only hope now is hitting the last Nisei in his deck, or hitting the future perfect, and winning the side game. It's a hedge fund, a shock. That ends my game. Um, the shock takes away my last card, which means that um, I'm no longer able to run through Yagura, so all servers are sealed up, the game's over. I played that rather badly, mostly because uh, by the time I realized he was playing the rig destruction net damage Jintaki build, it was far too late. I lost all my breakers by then, and recovery was uh, down to excess luck, which I didn't get. To be fair though, uh, I got really lucky on the side games, two very important side games, one that netted me three agenda points and another that prevented him from easily scoring agendas through his remote. You realize that he had to score his agendas unprotected in his remote, no Caprice Nisei on it. That's pretty huge for me, um, which because it really slowed him down, otherwise he would just chain agendas not worrying about me because he can easily play side games as an added means of protection. 
turns out that on the remote, the two eyes end up being two lotus fields stacked on top of one another. That cost 10 credits, he only had 7 credits after the siphon was stopped. So I'm going back to my point, I should have inside job his remote server on the third and fourth click, losing my passport but stealing the game winning Philotic Entanglement. That was a crucial mistake. Well, that's the game. Thanks for watching, happy net running, goodbye.